Alrighty, so today is going to be a really interesting video. It's almost going to be like a pre-video to a big video that I'm going to make on this subject. So a lot of the the uh, storyline to why I'm making this video is recently in the coaster community, we've noticed in our group that we have on Discord, a lot of people are putting a price tag on a roller coaster that a park shoots out there. So for example, when a park announces like a coaster like Yukon Striker and a price tag is thrown on it like $30 million, a lot of enthusiasts like to go, oh, Yukon Striker costs $30 million or Copperhead Strike costs $30 million or Fury costs $28 million and so on and so forth. And that's just simply not true. So there are a lot of hidden costs that go into building a roller coaster. And a lot of them have to do with like the hourly wage. So you're going to see on the screen some of the hourly wages to some of the positions that are needed for building something like a roller coaster. And on top of that, some of these positions require 10 to 15 workers. So it's pretty crazy when you do the math um, with how often they work. Some coaster projects have them working seven days a week or six days a week and some um, five days a week. And a lot of these projects can last anywhere from like three months to six months in terms of building. For example, Yukon Striker had construction teams on site for a good year and a half as an estimate. Now, that's not the entire workforce working all the time during that year and a half. So we're not going to blow those costs out of uh, hand with that estimate. But it's a really expensive project, especially when you add in like the crane rentals, the crane operator, um, the cost of steel. And now this is where things get interesting. So again, I'm going to go into a lot of detail in a future video. So I'm currently reaching out to um, the engineering group that designed and built the tunnel, um, the company that constructed the coaster. We're reaching out to anyone that had involvement with Yukon Striker just because it's easier for me to do a coaster in Canada and reach out to these people to help develop what actually does it cost to build a roller coaster. And after you break down everything, how much does the actual coaster purchasing from a manufacturer such as Bulger and Mabillard actually cost in the end? Um, so I'm going to go over, again, very minor details in this video. There's going to be a much more in-depth video coming down the road, not anytime soon. Again, this is going to be something that's going to take a lot of work because we got to go talk to like the people that you got to file the permits with. There's just so much work to do with that video. I wanted to make a quick video because it's just been bothering me a little bit how like a lot of enthusiasts just instantly go, this is what a coaster cost. Or, you know, when you purchase a coaster, this would come. No, there's so many hidden costs. Um, and that price tag on the actual coaster is ballooned um, up to this cost that looks absolutely outrageous. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, a company can't afford that or a company can't afford that. No, in the end, they can. There's just a lot of hidden costs. So, for example, I'll start with the construction manager. A construction manager um, typically could cost anywhere between 5 to 10 percent um, of the actual project cost itself. So that's crazy. Um, so if the whatever the construction price tag ends up coming out to when we uh, dive into a project or get more information, a construction manager could cost anywhere from five to ten percent of that. Now, Canada's Wonderland, I don't know if this is entirely true. I know that they have um, Peter Switzer, um, the head of engineering and construction at Canada's Wonderland. So I don't know if they Wonderland needs to actually hire a construction manager. Um, I know other companies have their own managers on site for their projects. I don't actually think Wonderland has to go out and hire a construction manager because they actually have that position filled um, permanently at the park. So that might alleviate that hefty cost there, but that's still a cost that the park is paying for yearly um, as a salary. But I just wanted to include that there for other parks or anything. So a construction manager could cost anywhere from 5 to 10% of the total project cost um, just in wage. So a construction project of a small scale apartment in Toronto, so key emphasis there, in Toronto, is around $4,500,000 for the entire thing of a small apartment, okay? So not medium-sized, not large-scale apartment. A small apartment is around $4,500,000 at the end of the day of what a company is putting in to build that, Okay. So put that into perspective, I'm doing a huge rough estimate here that the cost of a coaster 
um, construction wise to build it materials and everything um, is around that price tag as well. That's not including the steel, by the way, that's including the, the plumbing, the electrical, um, the cost of the construction, the crane, uh, the workers, the iron workers. Um, so that's my rough estimate there. I'm not including the track in that price. Um, although one could argue that the steel needed to build a small apartment might equal uh, actually, no, it's not going to come anywhere close. I'm trying to hitch your uh, thing. This is more of a huge rough estimate video, by the way, until we get that in-depth video um, in the process. I am reaching out. So that is a huge rough estimate. So $4,500,000 to build a very small apartment building in Toronto as actual costs coming out of the company building it before the profits of selling those apartment units. Um, a mechanical engineer makes about... 95 Swiss franc an hour. I'm, I took this out of Switzerland to get us a more accurate. That's about $128 Canadian an hour or $96 American an hour. That's crazy. Cause I don't know how long it takes to design these amazing coasters that mock Intamin and B&M build, but I, just calculate that $128 roughly Canadian or $96 American dollars an hour to for a mechanical engineer one to sit down and design these amazing things and then you add in like the manager that has to oversee the project um and then the profit that the company has to make who knows what that like, it's just crazy to think like that's part of like the thing but at the end of the day that's actually a very small dollar amount compared to the construction of the project so 128 dollars canadian or 96 dollars american an hour for a mechanical engineer to sit down and design a roller coaster I don't know if there's two or three that help design it. Maybe there's a team and then obviously the manager. But nonetheless, that can help you develop a rough cost on what it costs to design the actual coaster. Um, cost of steel is roughly 300 to 500 American dollars a ton currently. Huge emphasis on currently. It changes in price literally every second, every day, blah, blah, blah. Um, the price fluctuate. The price fluctuates a lot and can change the cost drastically. As even a one dollar increase or decrease in price to large orders, such as a coaster project, could lead to hundreds of thousands of dollars in fluctuation of price. So that's crazy. At any moment, just based off of when you purchase the steel to build the coaster, you could be saving or spending hundreds of thousands of dollars extra or less on a coaster project. So the time to purchase is key as uh, the price of steel is heavily um, sold and priced on demand. So if there's a large demand, the price is gonna go up. If there's less of a demand, the price is gonna go down. So when you purchase is very key. And I wonder if Cedar Fair and Six Flags and all those other uh, companies or even, um, you know, the company Clearmount Steel takes that into account when they purchase the steel. Are they purchasing steel like at times of like when it's on sale? Are they looking for that? Obviously, as a business, I'm, I'm thinking there's someone that's in charge of that. Now, Wikipedia has Yukon Strikers track pieces total weight of 1,213 tons. That would bring the cost of track to roughly $600,000 based on the extreme rough estimate of price per ton. Um, American. One could double that price as an extreme rough estimate for supports as well for some coasters. And um, now that is the weight of track pieces and not the amount of steel required to melt down and fabricate those pieces. So one could say that maybe that isn't the actual price in the end because I don't know how much steel you have to mount down to make one ton of uh, B&M track. So again, this number, that $600,000 number could mean absolutely nothing because I have no idea how much steel um, plates they need to melt down in order to create these B&M coasters or any other coaster. It could change. It also changes based on whatever coaster model um, is being made. Different track weighs less or weighs more. So it's it's different per coaster. Again, I'm using Yukon Striker as an example. So as you can see, there are so many things that play into the cost of a coaster. I mean, you look at a coaster like Yukon Striker and it has a tunnel built into it, which was actually subcontracted to another third party company to design and build as well. So you got to take into account that there's so many different aspects to a roller coaster project. 
that balloon those prices that you see when they post like largest investment in Carowinds history or largest investment in Canada's Wonderland's history, largest investment in Six Flags' history. And at the end of the day, if you were to really look down at it or look into it, I honestly don't think the actual coaster, um, like the, the coaster track and the designing of the coaster itself would be a very the largest portion of that. I mean, I'm even hearing that the trains are a huge cost to some of these projects as well. Like I'm I'm hearing one to $2 million per train. Sometimes that these trains could cost for some coasters. That's absolutely crazy. So sometimes like when enthusiasts again go like, oh, it costs so much money to build a roller coaster. A park like Six Flags could never a four day B&M dive coaster. At the end of the day, some of these large $30 million price tags on the coaster have a lot to do with the area of land that they're being built on, um, the economy at the current state, the cost of steel. Are there other aspects of the project like a tunnel being built, restaurants being built around it? How long is this project going to take place? Is it being built in weird climates like Canada where there's winter and it uh, prolongs the construction project, adding that extra cost of wages? Um, and stuff like that. So, I mean, it, it's it's quite crazy um, to think about all these hidden costs. And there's just so much more to it. There's electricians that you need to hire, plumbers that you need to hire. Um, you need to get those permits filed, which can cost a lot of money if you're having problems with, um, you know, the city agreeing to your project. Woo, it's just there's so much going on um, that you need to look into. And I'm going to try and get all of those hidden costs. Now, some companies may not be willing to give out information. Um, so we're going to ask those companies that may not want to speak on actual projects to give rough estimates as to that could lead us down a proper path. So hopefully when we come out with that video, we're going to get like a really good, amazing breakdown of what the price tag is for a roller coaster and what are those subcategories to that price tag for a roller coaster. So if I'm spending $30 million on Yukon Striker and Copperhead Strike, what is that price breakdown per the coaster, for the expanded area, for the restaurants and buildings, for the plumbing, electrical, the steel even? Like, what is that breakdown? I'm super excited about this. It's, this is almost like an announcement video as to a big documentary, mini docu, I guess, series that I'm going to work on on what it costs to build a roller coaster. Anyways, I really hope you guys are excited for that video. I'm. This is probably going to be the hardest project Amusement Insiders has worked on. I'm really going to be putting a lot of effort into this video um so oh man here it goes jumping into a big project amusement insiders actually going professional for once um in terms of getting the complete accurate information to the best of our ability but nonetheless hopefully you enjoyed these like very rough estimates as to what are the hidden costs of building a roller coaster um don't forget to leave a like comment about what you want to find out in this documentary that we're going to be working on Are there any questions that you want answered? Any um, questions that maybe I didn't even discuss in this video? And uh, share this video for others to enjoy. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great one. Bye.